Hello, everybody. Welcome to another live cast. I'm excited to have so many of you with me today. Thank you for taking some time to devote to learning more about real estate and the ways you can get to financial freedom using real estate. Thanks for being with me today. Super excited. We're going to be talking about the wholesale process. Um, some of you may not even know what wholesaling is, and some of you may have done this before, but I'm going to talk about the process from beginning to end. We're going to take the whole A to Z approach so you understand. We're going to go over seven different things uh, that you need to know in the wholesaling process and how this can be super beneficial to your real estate. And even if you're wanting to fix and flip rather than wholesaling, knowing how to wholesale and how it works can be very beneficial. So you may come across some deals where wholesaling is the better option for you. Um, and you're going to make more money doing wholesaling versus doing the fix and flip, or you'll make more money on an hourly basis because of the time and effort that's actually involved here. So let's jump right into this, guys. We are going to get get going here. Let's see, maybe. Um, here we go. The wholesaling process from beginning to the very end, what you're going to learn today, we're going to go over a whole bunch of stuff today. You're, we're going to talk about every single week I do a finding property tip of the week. If you're new, we're going to talk today about understanding the area and how that makes a big difference in finding great deals. We're going to talk about what is wholesaling. We're going to go through those seven steps to wholesaling. I'm gonna go through a few pro tips on how to buy, to how to build a buyer's list. This is a list of people that are gonna come and purchase those properties once you've found a good wholesale deals. Um, we're gonna go through how much you can make on a wholesale deal, how much money is actually out there for you. Uh, our agenda for today is welcome and updates, which we're doing right now. Then we're gonna jump into the real estate news. These are things I think you need to know about as a real estate investor that's happening in the world out there. Every single week, we do a finding tip of the week, which we're going to talk about areas, as I mentioned earlier. Then we get into our main event, our topic of the week, which is this wholesaling from beginning to the end. I'm also going to give a free t-shirt giveaway, um, which is my favorite segment. I shouldn't say it's my favorite segment, but I like seeing you guys in t-shirts. Um, and uh, we also give away a free tool of the week. I want something you can actually use. Um, and so I give something away every week that you can you can do absolutely for free to help you in your real estate investing. So I want to help you be successful. Uh, this shows for entertainment purposes only. Before we make any financial moves, consult with a real estate professional, attorney, CPA, or other professionals in the specific subject matter. Everybody's situation is different. There's no one size fits all approach. DHM may receive payment on the show for sponsorships, guests in the forms of books, giveaways, items, discounts, or other remediations. As with anything in life, results come from education, following a system, hard work, determination to follow through until the end. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so many of you. If you have not already, give me your first name and the state and city that you're investing in. Um, really appreciate you with us. Put it in the chat or put it in the comments if you're watching this as a recorded video. And if you are watching this as a recording, join us live. If you're live, you can actually type in questions. And we'll get those questions answered either through the chat or I'll answer them in what I'm covering here as well. We would love to have you and love to say hello if you're joining us live. For those of you that are live, thank you very much. I appreciate you being with me. Uh, love having live listeners, not just those on the recorded videos as well. Um, every single week, we do a t-shirt giveaway. What we're going to be giving away is one of our shirts. We do that at the end of the live cast. So the winner for today is actually last week's winner. And today's live cast on will announce that week's winner next week. So I probably should show you a couple of these, um, a couple of these shirts that we're giving away. I'd be interested in what shirt you like the best. Of course, I'm wearing my I flip and did it shirt. That's one of our one of our classics. Um, we've got our I made it through rehab. This is a, a classic favorite for our general contractors and um, a few others. <laughs> um, let's see here. We already shown. I'm wearing the I Flip and Did It, so I won't show you that one. This is a limited edition one. This is the Flippin' Legend. Uh, this is the three-fourths shirt size. Um, and then this is our spring edition um, that we're doing. This is a limited edition as well. This is Flipping Legends. Got our little logo on the side there. So right now we've got four shirts. If I first off, I'd like to know what shirt do you like the most? Type that in the comments. Um, I'd love to know that. And then secondly, 
Um, do you have any ideas for new shirts? If you come up with a great idea that we use on a shirt, number one, I'll send it to you. You don't even have to be the winner of the week. I'll send it to you. But if you have a great idea, real estate investing uh, shirt that we should put, we will make one and I will send you. Um, also, if you are the t-shirt winner of the week, I'd love to have you take a photo of yourself, right? Um, love to have you take a photo. Um, with that photo, we'd like to have you post that on our Facebook page. So take a pic of you wearing that killer uh, shirt, put it on facebook.com backslash do hard money because we would love to see you wearing our killer shirts. So who wants a free shirt today? All right. Um, what I need you to do is ask great questions. Questions you're asking in the chat are getting answered. Um, leave some positive comments, other people, high interaction, maybe tell somebody else that's a great question. Um, we're, we're looking for comments on the recorded video because after we do this live, it turns into a recorded video. You can go back and watch, but comments there, thumbs ups there, those things make a big difference. And we take a look at that and we make a determination about who's going to be the t shirt winner of the week. Now, like I said, this today's winner we're going to announce is for last week, but from the beginning here on until next week, we'll announce that winner next week. Uh, we'll choose one winner, okay? If you like these live casts and you want to see them continue, I really need your help. Um, currently, we're at 5,310 subscribers, and my goal is to reach 5,500 by the end of May. So I'm looking for another 190 subscribers. If you're listening to me right now and you're not currently a subscriber, please go hit that subscribe button. Um, you are not going to regret it. Every single day, I upload a new video of the day. We call these Just Ask Ryan videos, and these are questions that you can ask, and I will answer by creating a killer video just like these and to answer that question. All you've got to do is type your comments in the comment section. Excuse me, type your question in the comment section, um, and then I will create a video just like these, Deed and Little Foreclosure, and we do these. Now, these are just short little videos. They're anywhere from a couple of minutes up to 10, maybe 12 minutes, most of them around five to eight minutes. And we do a new one every single day, answering a specific question that you may be having. So please hit that thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button. If you are subscribed right now, please type it in the chat or put it in the comments so we can give you a big thank you. Uh, who knows, it might make you one of the t-shirt winners of the week. Our YouTube channel is Do Hard Money. Um, and please tell somebody else about it. There's no bigger compliment I can get than having somebody say, I got referred to this from a friend. It's fantastic. Uh, today, what are we going to be giving away? Well, we're talking about wholesaling. And one of the big things with wholesaling is an assignment of contract. And this is a sample assignment of contract. Um, we'll have a link uh, to download this at the end of the live cast today. So if you'd like to get a copy of this, stick around to the end. We'll give you a copy absolutely for free to help you with your real estate investing. All right, guys, I got to grab a drink before we get into the real estate market update. All right, guys, um, let's talk about the real estate market update. What's going on? And what you need to know about. So this is really interesting. I found this by CBS. Toronto is a different country. Okay, so let's just be clear here. But it's interesting because Toronto follows some of the some of the signs. Toronto's real estate market remains hot, but shows first signs of cooling. Home sales in April were down 12.7 percent from the month prior. Average sales price was down slightly. While the first three months of the year were full of bidding wars, soaring prices and a mad scramble to snatch up any available homes, Toronto's real estate broker, Wins Ali, said she is seeing conditions start to cool. Now, cooling all needs to be in perspective because right now it needs to be cooled, in my opinion. Um, while the pace of price growth could be moderate in the coming months, home prices will likely continue on the upward trajectory over the long term is what they're saying. So I don't think this is anything we need to lose any sleep over. Um, I think that we're going to have some normalization of prices, which is something that should be happening. Um, how to survive the inflation? Three successful investors weigh in. One of the big concerns right now with the money that the U.S. government's been pumping in is the idea of inflation. Well, what happens? What is inflation? Well, inflation is the price of things you buy is more today than it was yesterday. The reason is, is because there's more money into the pool. So all of a sudden, prices are actually going to be soaring. So the question is, how can you survive or hedge against inflation? And the answer, according to the Motley Fool, is high-quality stocks, precious metals, gold and 
excuse me, gold and silver and real estate have traditionally been safeguards against inflationary pressures. Um, I don't know if you're cluing in on this, guys, but real estate, real estate, real estate has always been something to hedge against inflation. So it's great to be part of real estate investing to help hedge us against that inflation. Forbes says what we need to know about the changes to lending rules and how real estate investors, professionals should be preparing. March 10th, 2020, Freddie Mac Fannie Mae announced that they're going to buy fewer second home investment mortgages, which basically what this means is you're going to have a harder time getting a mortgage on a second home or investment property only because it's probably going to be more expensive. There's going to be someone out there that's willing to buy that paper, but Fannie and Freddie are saying we're only going to buy 7% of our paper. It's going to be uh, second homes and investment properties because they want to limit their exposure. Now, why is this? Well, if somebody gets in financial trouble, the first thing they're going to let go is their second home before they're going to let their primary home go down. And traditionally, investment mortgages are going to be at higher risk as well if there is some downturn. So you can see Fannie, and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are starting to posture a little bit here, which is probably something we need to be aware of. Buyers who are already pre-qualified by the lender should not be shocked to find out a surcharge or even a loan denial. A loan denial saying, we're not going to do your loan. We're, you're pre-qualified. We're now deciding not to do the loan. And a surcharge basically means you're paying more for it than what you're planning on. So they may have quoted you one interest rate and they're going to change that interest rate. Or they may have quoted you one origination and they've decided to increase that origination fee. Don't be surprised. Conventional lending is still offered, which is non-Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, but it's going to be costing you more. So in essence here, it's going to cost you a little bit more money in order for you to do an investment property if you're doing a refinance. This is something to note so you can plan for that when you're looking at your numbers, making a determination. Now, does that mean you shouldn't go try and find a rental property? Absolutely not. It just means you need to plan for that and know what that additional expense is going to be so you can bake that into your numbers to make sure you're getting a great deal. Okay, all things real estate, will there ever be a bubble? One important factor today is the Dodd-Frank law that makes banks scrutinize their loan requirements and eliminate no-doc subprime loans. You see, back in 2007 and before that, you could go and do what are called liar loans. You could just say, I make this amount of money, and the bank would say, okay, we trust you. Uh, and so there was no uh, documentation, which was kind of this whole no-doc thing. Well, after the real estate crisis of 2008, uh, this Dodd-Frank came in and said, you know what, we're going to start doing stress tests on banks. We're no longer going to allow this subprime loan, subprime no-doc type thing. Um, basically, what was happening is these no-doc loans were getting sold on the secondary market, and they were looking, they were with either a bunch of good stuff, um, so they're mixed in, and they were some garbage, uh, and you didn't really realize it. So that has been much stricter, which is one of the reasons why they're saying, you know, we're not going to see this bubble burst. Um, so today's financing requirements are much more strict than they were back in 2008. Um, I'm not quite sure how builders can increase the required inventory to satisfy demands today. And in the future, land values have increased, lumber has increased, um, and we're experiencing a perfect storm for both buyers and sellers. So unless there's some catastrophic event, I don't see price going anywhere anytime soon. Is the housing market about to crash? Here's why experts say the answer is no, according to bank rates. Six compelling reasons. Number one, inventories are at record lows. Builders can't build quickly enough to meet the demands. Mortgage rates remain near historic lows. Demographic trends are creating new buyers. And lending standards remain strict. And foreclosure activity is muted. Okay, Forbes says how Biden's tax proposals could impact real estate investors. One thing business owners are able to take advantage of now is Section 1031. Under IRS code tax, you are able to defer the taxes on an exchange if you start off with a small property and exchange it for a larger one. The idea with this is tax deferral. This has been used quite a bit because I can buy a rental property, I can then, or I can buy a property, I can then 1031 it, which basically means any equity and any debt I have into that property goes into another property. And I can even split that around multiple properties, which helps us a little bit with the leverage side of things, um, which basically got you into more properties without paying tax on the money that you're reinvesting. It's a fantastic thing to help encourage investing. Biden's talking about getting rid of this. It's concerning. His campaign last summer said he's going to target like kind exchanges. Another big item under consideration is the ability for non-residential owners to depreciate improvements. 
It used to be you could do an accelerated depreciation or bonus depreciation, and now they're wanting to have that go over a standard 39-year depreciation, which would happen. This really only applies if you've got some rental properties or some commercial properties, but it's something you've got to be aware of here, especially if you're looking to get in that type of investment. How the U.S. market was rocketed by COVID-19 and where we go from here. The lack of existing homes is only part of the problem, though. Builders have struggled to ramp up construction on new homes, specifically popular models. How the housing market was rocketed from here, part of this is the foreclosure memorandum, um, bait moratorium, excuse me. The moratorium ends homeowners who haven't been able to rebound from the crisis may be forced to sell their homes, and this could also add to the supply of properties on the market. That will help alleviate some of the scarcity. Right now, there's 2.72 million homes that are in some sort of forbearance, which means they're behind on payments and they've done some type of a workout plan. All right, guys, let's get into this property finding tip of the week. But first, let me get our drink. If you've got questions, type those into the chat. We want to make sure we get them answered for you. Okay, what we're going to be talking about here in our property finding tip of the week is understanding the area and trends, when to use them, why to do a postcard versus a letter, are they cost effective, how many to send to get a deal, um, how do you know if an area is a good investment, how do you know where to start even looking for a property. Um, that's really what it comes down to. This could be a fix and flip that you want. It could be a rental property. It could be investing out of state. Like, how do you know? Well, the answer is pretty simple. You do this by analytics. Um, I don't want to invest where there are high-end homes in the area. I don't want to be where there's very inexpensive homes in the area. I want to be in that FHA loan max in the areas that I'm doing this. And you can Google this. You simply just say, what's the FHA loan max for my county? and you can find out what that is. It changes, um, but I also don't want to be in these low areas, so typically I want to be over $75,000. Well, so if you're one of our members, you've got access to our Investor's Edge, and it can help us out with this. So we'll do an example here where we go to Atlanta, Georgia, we go to our analytics, and we'll look at some estimated values, and so you can see what some of the different homes are actually going for. So let's jump over here, guys, so we can help you out in taking a look here. So let's just type in Atlanta, Georgia, and, um, Right here, you see this button that's analytics. And so estimated values is a great one. We click on our values here. And let's just look at estimated value, right? Well, what that's going to do for us, do, 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 estimated value. Okay, that's going to give us this color map, right? And so over here, you've got under $100,000. And over here, you've got over a million dollars. And so I definitely don't want to be in these areas. I definitely don't want to be in these light blue areas. I want to be somewhere in this area here. Well, I can look, if I don't want to be in those light blues, if I don't want to be under $100,000, I definitely don't want to come over here. There's patches. You know, as I zoom in and zoom out, I can get better feels for kind of what's going on here. So these are more expensive, better areas, uh, more expensive areas. I don't necessarily better. Here's some less expensive neighborhoods here. Here's maybe some moderate, um, you know, some things to look at. But I can see that. Let's look at that red right up there. Look at these are where the really expensive houses are. You can see that. So this really helps me in determining my area of places I want to be because more than likely, um, these are going to be more difficult neighborhoods, but they potentially are going to have more opportunity. But I can just get a good feel for what's happening all over, um, and that helps me know which areas I really want to be investing in and which ones that I may not want to be investing in. So as we talked about there, you can get an idea where the expensive homes are. You get an idea where the cheap homes are. All of that you can get a really good feel for and know what you want to do. You can also do value per square foot. Um, or estimated value per bedroom, which can help us with both of those. So you can also look at price growth. So we're going to uh, switch back over here and show you a couple things like we're talking about here. So if we look at estimated value, estimated value per bedroom, right? So this is going to tell us bedrooms are more valuable here, 
bedrooms are more valuable there. We can also look at the price growth. So what's happened over the price growth over the last six months? I mean, everything's on fire right now for today, the way we, we are speaking, but you can keep an idea of what's really going on there. We can also look at the MLS information where you can look at listing prices so you have a better idea of what's happening with some of the listing prices and what to expect there. And another one that I want to talk about is rental, right? This is the rental price. Um, or you can even look at rental by uh, rental by the bedroom. So you can see here you're getting a lot less for rent by the bedroom here than you are up in this area. Those are all just things you want to make some uh, consideration on so you actually know. So value per square foot, I don't know if we looked at that one. Value per bedroom we looked at on oh, the price growth. Let's just kind of give you an idea. Um, so price growth is right here. Uh, oh yeah, we looked at the six month price growth already and um, estimated value by bedroom. So we kind of got, got an idea with both of those as well. Whoops, let me get back here to our slides. There we go. Um, okay guys, rental price growth we already talked about it as well. So this really helps you determine where to spend your time and where to market, what areas you should actually be investing in. And then you really want to combine this with vacant properties, with involuntary liens, with bankruptcies, out-of-state owners, non-owner occupied, pre-foreclosures, failed listings, and then you want to do driving for dollars to find these types of properties. And so one of the things that we've done here is we've created these buckets for you. So this first bucket is vacant properties. These are vacant properties. They're single family houses. They're unlisted. They're not on the multiple listing service. Um, and they've got $50,000 or more of equity. These are live properties right here, right now. Um, these are properties that have $5,000 liens on them, not involuntary liens, not a mortgage or something like that. These are single family, unlisted. Um, these are bankruptcies. There's 2,000 bankruptcies, more than 2,095 bankruptcies. They're single family houses, unlisted, that have $50,000 or more of equity in them. Um, here's out-of-state owners. There's uh, 10,512 out-of-state owners in Atlanta, Georgia, that are single family, unlisted, and have equity. Now, maybe with all this, maybe you want to say, oh, I am interested in all different properties, right? So I'm interested in uh, duplexes and single family. Will you come in here and make all these changes and save them? These are non-owner occupied. There's 45,000 non-owner occupied, single family, unlisted with $50,000, 71 pre-foreclosure. This is back to the foreclosure uh, moratorium that's happening right here. There's 3,892 failed listings. These could be failed listings from a while ago um, before the pandemic. So these in the past have been interested in selling, but haven't been able to at the current moment. So these are types of things that we're actually looking for. So you also want to combine this with if somebody had a pre-foreclosure but has no equity in their home, it's not going to be a great opportunity where we can help them out. So we want to look with equity as well. So then what you're going to do is skip trace these. You're going to call them and you're going to make those phone calls. You can use a phone dialer. Um, this will help with organization. It saves time. You can call up to 300 per hour. Um, leave a voicemail for you so you don't have to leave voicemails. Um, if you have call reluctance, you just hit a button and it just starts dialing, which is really helpful. And then the question is like, well, what do you say? And I say, hey, is this Bill Jones or whatever the owner's name is? And yes, it is. Or no, it's not. Or who's asking? Hey, my name's Ryan. I know it may be a random question, but I'm interested in buying a home in your area. I wonder if you have any interest in selling the home. Um, if they say yes, you move forward. We have a motivated seller script. Our members have access to that. Uh, if they say no... Um, you have to just say, do you have any other properties or do you know anyone else that might be interested in selling their home? And that's what we basically get into there uh, as we're talking about analyzing those areas as a way of finding properties. Okay, guys, I got to grab a drink. We are just rocking through this. This is the main event. Um <laughs> This is what you have been waiting for. This is like the big fight, right? The big... Okay. The wholesale process from beginning to end. What you're going to learn today, what is wholesaling? The seven steps to wholesaling. Pro tips for building a list of buyers. How much can you make on a wholesale deal? That's what we're going to get into. So first off, what is wholesaling? Wholesaling is getting a good deal under contract. Put it on, get a good deal, put it under contract, and then sell that contract to somebody else for a profit. 
That's really how simple it is. So why do people like wholesaling? Well, it's only half the process. You don't have to do the rehab. You don't have to fix the property up. Lots of times it's a faster paycheck, meaning you get paid now rather than have to wait three months or six months to fix the property up and find a new buyer. And once you find a good deal, you get paid in as fast as a few weeks. Management, you don't have to manage construction crews. Um, it's less risky. In many cases, you don't have to sign on the loan. Um, you're just basically converting that paper to an assignment, um, which is one of the things we're giving away as a free giveaway today. Um, so you want to stay to the end and check that link out. Uh, you don't have to worry about cost overruns. These are problems in constructions where things cost more than what you're anticipating. Those are called cost overruns. Um, price change over time. Um, the risk of value changes. Um, and there's just little capital to get started. Um, you don't have to spend a lot of money to actually get a deal and get it under contract like you may have to do fixing up a property. Now, let's also counter that with some of the downsides to wholesaling. So you typically make less money than you would fix and flipping. Keep in mind, the end buyer also needs to make a profit as well uh, through reselling or through renting the property. Lots of times, if you can find landlords that you can wholesale to, you'll do even better on your wholesale than a fix and flipper. Um, and you have to find a really good deal. Uh, it's a deal that can make you money and make somebody else money along the way in order for it to work as a wholesale deal. So the question really is like, how much can you make wholesaling a property? And I'm going to say anywhere from $1,000 to $100,000. The typical is probably five dollars to $20,000. So um, on a really good deal, wholesalers can make more money than a fix and flipper. This is an extreme example. Um, a wholesaler made $92,000 wholesaling. Uh, the buyer is going to make around $35,000. And this is not typical, but it can happen. It comes down to finding great deals. So we're going to jump into this whole seven steps to begin the process uh, for the wholesale process from beginning to end. So one, create a blueprint. This is the first step you need to do in wholesaling. You've got to determine what zip codes are going to work. Uh, the idea with this is you're reverse engineering your success. So what I mean by zip codes, you want to determine which zip codes have the most number of cash transactions that are actually happening. And based upon that, you sort the list to determine which zip codes have the most investor activity as far as it relates to cash buyers. Then we're going to make the assumption that the more cash buyers that are there, the more opportunities are there that they're willing to make purchases on. And those are the people you're trying to wholesale to is those cash buyers or somebody that's getting a hard money loan. With that, you can determine the zip codes that you want to be working. And then we get into what's called reverse engineering or success. The reverse engineering or success is basically saying, what do I want to get to and how do I get there? So if I want to get a property, if I want to get a deal, what's before getting a deal? Well, I need to get a contract. Well, what's before getting a contract? I need to get appointments. What's before getting appointments? I need to make contacts. What's before getting contacts? I need to drive and find properties that could work. So then it breaks down for you how many properties you need to find, for how many calls you need to make, for how many contacts you need to make that turn into leads, for how many appointments you need to get on for you to end up with one property. It's reverse engineering your success. Now we talked a little bit about this with the zip codes, finding where those cash buyers are. Um, and this is people that are actually paying cash. There's not a lot of investors that pay cash in the area. The assumption is there's lots of investment activities. And once you do this, you sort to determine the top zip codes you want to be working in, and then you can get really targeted in what you're doing. Reverse engineering success is what we call the next property roadmap, which is your roadmap to get that next property. Um, we use driving for dollars. This is how we find properties. Um, you determine how many hours you're going to drive, how many days per week, how you will contact prospects. My recommendation is calling. And then based upon that, you can create this plan. This is our next deal roadmap. So you can see up here at the top, how many hours you're going to drive a week, how many days a week, what's your marketing strategy? Are you going to send postcards? Are you going to call them? What are you planning to do? Um, the, some of these others are defaults, which is how many properties you can get an hour. Um, you want to just plug those in. And then with that, it puts you a weekly homework assignment. For this one, it's 20 weeks in order to find a property on average. Um, and you're going to spend about $288 
and it's going to take you uh, average hours a week. We on this plan is about 19 hours a week. Now you may want to work less than that, no problem. Make the adjustment, take a little longer to find a property, um, or you can work. Uh, you can do other things. So you manipulate these to put a next deal, uh, next property roadmap together that works specifically for you. So to just give you an idea of the numbers here, these vary, so you wanna use the next deal property roadmap, but the numbers, if you're gonna drive six hours per week, um, you would get about 20 properties per, per hour, you'd need to add about 2,100 properties to your list. Then you skip trace to get the phone numbers, and you'd call three to four properties, so you'd be calling like 6,000 calls, um, dials, I should say, not conversations. It'll take you about 20 weeks to find a property, six hours a week driving, six hours a week calling is basically what you'd be looking at. And it could happen a lot faster and it could also take a lot slower. It's gonna depend on a lot of variables. Um, it's gonna depend on the area, the competition, your skill sets, what type of list, where you're driving. You know, the list goes on and on, but I wanna give you some ideas of something to work towards. Because what I find is it doesn't need to be exact. You need to be moving in the right direction. And if you're doing the right things and moving in the right direction, good things happen to those who are putting a plan together and working that plan. All right, step two of our seven step wholesaling from beginning to end is getting a software and getting the software set up. You gotta have driving routes. I really recommend using Investor's Edge for this. Skip tracing, I recommend using Investor's Edge because it integrates, we use a third party to actually do that. And the phone dialer, I recommend using Mojo, uh, which is a phone dialer, which makes it just so much easier We'll talk a little more about that in a minute. But driving routes, you want to make sure you don't drive the same streets twice in more than six months. You want to help you know which properties actually have equity. It helps you to pull comps all just right there. Uh, skip traces, this gives you the phone number for the property owner that you're trying to go after here. And the phone dialer itself it helps with call reluctance. It's so much easier just to hit a button and have it just dial and you're just waiting for the phone to pop and you say, hey, this is Ryan. I was wondering if you had some interest in selling your house. And it's so much easier than having to dial each one, dial each one, dial each one, because you can get uh, bored of that pretty easily. But if you just put, I'm here, let's go, it helps and it saves you a lot of time. But in addition to that, it's gonna keep track of things for you. It's gonna keep track of, um, of your leads, where they're at, what's going on. Step three, once we've done those two things, is to actually get out there and start driving. This is how we find properties. We identify the area, so we know the zip code that has the most investor activity, but now we look for properties that need repairs. One dirty little secret people don't really know is banks, big banks, credit unions, don't wanna lend on properties in need of work. As a matter of fact, if they're getting an FHA loan, the FHA uh, appraiser has to go through the property and identify anything that could be a problem um, one of my favorites is what's called wood to earth contact, meaning if the wood is touching the dirt, that's a problem. Another one of my favorites is having slopage towards the property rather than away from the property. If it's sloping towards the property, it's not going to pass. If it doesn't have, um, if it's missing some cabinets, if the, the vent fan doesn't work, these things, this list goes on and on, it's pages and pages of this list. Well, if it doesn't match those criteria where it would get signed off from that list, then guess what? you're not going to be able to get a traditional loan. So someone that owns a property that meets some of these criteria has a couple of options. They can either sell to a cash investor or hard money, uh, somebody getting hard money, or they have to spend the money to fix those things themselves and then sell it on the open market and pay agent fees and commissions and all that type of stuff. Well, a lot of these people just don't have the money to do it or the time to do it or the inclination to want to do it. So one of the great things about properties is they're getting worn down if they're not up, if they're not kept up, which is an opportunity for us. So what we're doing is we're determined which zip code. Now we're driving that specific zip code. And as we're driving that specific zip code, we're looking for properties in need of repairs. But not just in need of repairs, this could be properties that have broken or boarded up windows, or they have dead landscaping, or they have construction materials, or there's a gutter in disrepair, or there's a legal notice on the door. Missing siding, no blinds, you can see right through the house, probably means it's vacant. The lawn's been overgrown, there's some peeling paint, you know, things where they're not taking care of it. Um, bad siding, broken down cars, those are my favorites. There's been some fire damage, or there's a handicapped ramp, or there's long grass, uh, moving boxes, an overstuffed mailbox, or overgrown vegetation, peeling paints. 
um, and trash and debris. So anytime we see these types of things, we mark that. And then when we get back to our computer to our house, then we can skip trace all those we marked, download them, put them into our, our dialer and start making calls. So you build the list, right? So you're building a prospects list. And then we start getting to number four. This is where we actually start making the phone calls. You skip trace them, you get the phone numbers. Then you set up the dialer. You can call it manually, but I like the dialer. I like Mojo. Or you can just call and keep track of these. Use a spreadsheet or something. So then the question is like, well, what the heck do I say? It's, it's really quite simple. Uh, my name's Ryan. I'm looking for the owner of 123 Main Street. Yeah, this is him. What do you want? I say, I have a bit of a random question. I'm looking to buy a house in the area and wonder if you have any interest in selling. And they say, no. And they say, do you have any other properties you may be wanting to sell or know anybody else that does? Or they say, yes. And then you move on to the motivated seller script. Number five you actually go on the appointment. Now, like I talked about earlier, you're gonna have to drive a whole lot and get a lot of properties. You're gonna have to make a whole lot of phone calls and then you have to talk to a, several people and part of those will be interested. Those become leads. And then from there you go on to appointments, which is the next step. For those interested, you gather more details using the motivated seller sheet. That's something our members have access to. You set a firm appointment with them. Um, I like that appointment within 24 hours, but this is the pro tip. This will save you so much time and get you closer to success more than anything. Before you set this appointment, you're asking this golden question. You're saying, hey, I'm a, I'm a real estate investor. I need to make a little bit of money on this. Um, and you may be able to get a little bit more if you listed with an agent. You know, you obviously have agent fees and you've got to clean up the house and you've got to fix all those problems, you know, that type of stuff. You've got to fix that broken window. Um, so why would you be interested in selling to me rather than maybe getting a little bit more selling with an agent? If they can't convince you why they're more interested in working with an investor or more interested in working with you, you shouldn't go on the appointment. You see, if they're just stopping you to try and get the highest prices and those things, you don't want to waste your time with that. You'd rather make phone calls and keep driving to find the ones. And I can assure you there are people that it makes sense to trade time and headache for a little less money, right? There are a lot of that. So especially the worse the property is, which is why you're driving around trying to find those worst properties. Now, before we go on that point, we're doing our comparables. We're doing our value search. I use Investor's Edge for this. I determine what my maximum allowable offer is. Then when I go on the appointment, I'm building a relationship with the person. I'm negotiating with the person. And also, I'm getting them to sign a contract. With that, I take a picture of the property. So I'm taking pictures of everything inside the property, inside, outside, everything else. The fact of the matter is not everyone is going to sell. If you do it right, about one in four of those apart, uh, appointments are actually going to sell to you. And then once we get that under contract, number six, step six, is the cash buyer's list. This is how we develop this cash buyer's list. With this, you create a determine the zip codes to work in. Now you skip trace them, right? So we already decided those zip codes. Now we can skip trace these. And then we start calling cash buyers and then simply saying, uh, within the last year, you bought a house for cash in the area in this zip code. I've got another property that's very similar. Would you have some interest in buying it? And I can create my cash buyers list and then I can send them the details. Now, I don't have to cat create my own cash buyers list. I can find another wholesaler and I can co-wholesale the property, meaning I bring the property, we put it their list, and we do some sort of split um, once their buyer actually buys on the property, which can help you not have to go through this step um, but this step will make you more money if you go through it. With that, you get offers, you negotiate. And that leads us to step number seven. Step number seven is simply closing this. This could be through an assignment. Some states will let you do an assignment. Other states want you to do a full closing. So let's talk about an assignment. This is where they send you the money and you sign over your rights to the contract. So you say, send me 10,000 bucks. If I have the property under contract for $100,000, I say, fantastic. You can buy it for $100,000. You got to send me $10,000. Your total cost is one ten. Ten thousand went to me. Hundred thousand lets you finish up the transaction. In other states, you have to do a full closing, so a double closing or a simultaneous close. You send the money to the title company or the closing attorney, um, and then they have to. The new buyer has to bring that money in. You set a time for closing. Those can be uh, a little bit tricky. You've got to work with a title and closing attorney that understand double closings or simultaneous closings. Those are two separate and distinct things. 
All right, guys, let's just recap this. The seven steps of the wholesaling process from beginning to end. Step number one is create a blueprint. Step number two is get software and get set up. Step number three is drive. Step number four is call. Step number five is appointments. Step number six is your cash buyers list. And step number seven is close on the transaction. If you would like to get your hands on our complete system that takes brand new investors through flipping their very first home, it's called our Find Fund Flip System. We have dozens of hours of training, deal finding software, access to our 100% financing loan. Go to dohardmoney.com backslash get started. You won't be disappointed. Also, if you'd like to get a copy of our assignment of contract absolutely for free, all you've got to do is text me your email address. Text me 435-294-0433. Gotta get out of a drink, guys. We're just rocking today. Okay, here we go. Um, if you enjoyed this, please hit that subscribe button. And if you do, type it in the comments. I would like to hear and know and tell someone else about it. What would you guys like to see for future live cast topics? We do this each week at 6 p.m. Uh, Tuesdays, Eastern Standard Time. If you see something on here that you'd like, or there's something else you'd like to have me put a live cast together for, please put that in the comments and let me know. If you haven't already, get that copy of assignment. All you've got to do is text me your email address to 435-294-0433. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, please share the link on YouTube with some friends or several friends and check out my podcast. My podcast is Income Hacker. You can get it on iTunes, Apple, Spotify, wherever, even Alexa and Google Home. You can say play Income Hacker and you'll hear the podcast getting started. Again, grab that assignment of contract. Now, it's time to see who the t-shirt winner is. And uh, we'll be giving, what I need to have you do is let me know which shirt you like the best. You can type that in the comments. But our winner for last week's winner is, our winner is Top Real Estate Kid. Top Real Estate Kid, thank you for being a part of it. We appreciate your contributions and what you said, your positive attitude, your great comments, contributing to it. All you gotta do, Top Real Estate Kid, is email support at dohardmoney.com. Put in the subject line, you're the shirt winner. Put what your screen name is, your real name. Uh, put your mailing address, your cell phone, and your shirt size. I also need you to add which shirt you'd be most interested in. Give me your top couple and we'll send you, depending upon sizes, we'll send you what you got. We'll send out a free shirt, pay for the shirt, pay for the shipping, send it out your way. So congratulations, everybody. Give him a high five, the top real estate kid. Thank you for being with us. If you haven't already, grab a copy of that assignment of contract. Um, all you got to do is text us at 435-294-0433. Text me your email address. Now, if you want to find out if you won this week, it goes through this week until next Tuesday. You'll want to join me next week where we'll be announcing this week's winner for our t-shirt um, giveaway. Next week, we're going to be talking about 16 things to never say to a general contractor. You're not going to want to miss this one. Um, I started out having seven things, and I'm like, there's a lot of things, and it grew up to 16. So join us next Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll go through this again. If you haven't already, grab a copy of that assignment of contract. All you have to do is text, my, text me your email address to 435 284 zero four three three thanks so much guys i really appreciate you being with me have another great week and make it a very profitable day